Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial video. We have this mobile PCB with this problem, fake charging, which means that when you connect the phone on charge, it's going to be showing charging, but not increasing. Even 1%, you are not going to see if the phone is 0%. If you charge it overnight, you are, going, you are not going to see any extra percentage. So what I do, I connect the phone on charge. If you take a look, you will see that the phone will show that it's charging, right? So that's zero percent. And also, if you take a look at our charging ammeter, you will see something. Let me display that. If you take a look here, you will see that there is no current consumption here. So anyone who is doing mobile repairing, this is one thing that you have to keep in mind when you receive this type of fault. Check your DC power, yeah. check your uh, charging arm method to see if you are going to see any current consumption. I've made a couple of videos on how to fix this fault. There is no particular way to fix because the way that I will fix it is not the way that I've been fixing. Yeah, it might be, you get. So you just have to keep in mind that this is how you should start troubleshooting this to see if the phone, if the battery is consuming any current from the charger to charge you get so right now all we have to do we have to know the, the the circuit where the charging circuit of the mobile phone is if it has a bigger charging ic or a smaller charging ic if you are getting that charging voltage in the battery connector or not so the first thing that we are going to do we are going to test the battery connector if you are getting any charging voltage that will be the first thing that we will do and to do that let's set our multimeter to the correct range which will be DC range after connecting the charger let's go ahead to test the charging voltage first I want us to look for the VBUS voltage I want us to look for the VBUS voltage around the connector going to the down PCB so that's the VBUS voltage. It's okay. Let's come to the battery connector, which is this. You can see the voltage that we are getting here. So that voltage is really low. That voltage is not okay. So let's go ahead and use our schematic diagram then see what exactly can be going on with the circuit if i go to the to the usb tab we will see that this is the point in which we, we just tested tested this point and we are, we are getting 5 volt here which is okay so from here you will see the line let's see where the line is heading to it's still the line so the line is heading to this OVP IC we have this OVP IC here this OVP IC should give that 5 volt to this other side before we go ahead to check anything we have to understand this circuit completely even though we are using the guideline here it doesn't show all the, the complete circuit like for example you can see this you can see that we are getting a connection into these two ICs right and if you take a look carefully you will see that the this other side of the IC ICs are connected to the same track that is heading here so which means that these are just transistors i think and we have to know where they are heading to and we have to understand this circuit completely keep in mind this phone doesn't have a charging ic which means that we have to be very skeptical while checking the, the fault while checking the fault you get so let's we have to use our schematic diagram to understand this circuit. I think this line should be going to the VBAT, even though we have the VBAT 
Yeah, so this V bar that we, we have seen here should be that of the of the power supply of the phone, not that in which is charging the phone, not that in which is taking in the charging voltage to charge the phone. So I think this big track right here should be it. And just to make sure that you understand everything clearly, we are going to use schematic diagram so that you will know exactly how you can do proper troubleshooting when you come across this fault. So we have to open our layout, which is also called part number, and we have to locate the circuit that we are working on. So if you locate this, you will see that we are working on this. This is the this is the OVP IC and we have the two ICs that I was talking about which I said they are transistors. So if we take a look at the number we have to we just need one of these numbers. You can see we have Q2201. So I just want to see the circuit of this IC the input an output where the output is going to and also any line that is also connected to this IC. So if you go to, we are going to search this Q2201. If you go to schematic diagram, I'm going to search. If I search Q2201, you will see that. You are right, this is a transistor. Even though the IC is big, we have just three pins. You can see that if I go back to the guideline, you will see that we have a lot of pins here, right? The IC, these two ICs seem to have a lot of pins, but looking at the schematic diagram, you will know exactly how it's connected. You can see that we have one, two, and three. So first, we have the, the VBUS, we have the VBUS, which is getting into the IC here, which will be this, this VBUS output, right? So let's take a look at the other pins. So this other pin should be, this other pin should be the en enable signal of this I see transistors need a signal to be able to switch out the output voltage and the output voltage is going to the VBAT. This is what I was looking for. So the output voltage is going to the VBAT and it passes through this R2225 resistor. And if you go to the guideline, you will see that we have R22. 25 resistor right and this is the resistor here this is the resistor okay so you can see the track which is directly from here which is directly from here so if you go back here you will see that this ic is also getting is this IC the complete circuit is also connected to the LDO the LDO voltage which means that if you come here and look at the complete circuit like the circuit from the VBUS OVP VBUS you will see that it's going to the power manager IC but not directly it comes to this resistor right here and then we get charging LDO voltage, which is low drop out regulator voltage here. So this 5 volt that is getting into this resistor here is being converted to the LDO voltage, which is just which is just a drop out voltage, and that voltage can be around 3 volt to 4 volt. You get so you have to get that voltage out of this resistor so what we are going to do the first thing that we are going to just pick here but we will have to do some tests before we go ahead to touch anything this ic one of these ic's here is causing the fault 
and will need to be changed and also if the charging LDO here is not available these ICs won't be getting that enable the correct enable signal let me say the correct enable signal to pass out the correct voltage to charge the battery because if you go to the schematic diagram you will see that we have LDO which the line is connected to the enable signal of this transistor here so let's go ahead and solve this first let's find the LDO voltage so let's go ahead and remove the shield so after removing the shield all I have to do connect the charging PCB plug in the charger so I plug in the charger I go ahead and look for the OVP input in the resistor as explained when I was pointing at the schematic diagram. So I will go ahead and test the, the OVP input. That's 5 volt. No output voltage. We are getting 5 volt and we are supposed to be getting a voltage there. We are supposed to be getting at least 3 volt there, but there is no voltage, which means that the LDO voltage is not available. Let's do the test again. 5 volt, which is the OVP 5 volt, as we saw in the schematic diagram the OVP the LDO charging LDO voltage is not available so without the charging LDO voltage the power manager IC won't be able to initialize the charging current for the battery and also according to the schematic diagram let's take a look at this no, I don't just go straight to solve faults in most cases because the reason why I create videos, I create videos so that you can learn from. That's why my videos are not just me holding a phone trying to solve the fault. I'm teaching, so you have to be patient when you are watching. I'm saying this for those who are new. If you are watching this and you are new to my profile, my YouTube channel and all that, so I take my time to explain how things are. If you come back to this circuit, you will see that you will see that I talked about the charging LDO having a connection with the enable signal of this uh, transistor right here. So, according to me, there was not supposed to be. According to me, there is not supposed to be a voltage in the VBAT line because, well, we have two ICs here, we have two uh, transistors here. Maybe one is supposed to enable the voltage that, that we saw, which is the low voltage that we saw in the battery connector. But according to this CPU, we need a voltage from the, from the LDO line be able to give out the output voltage that will go to the VBAT line here. So let's not waste a, a lot of time. I just wanted you to understand this. Now that we know exactly where the fault is, and the fault is here, this resistor right here, the fault is coming from this resistor. The, the, is it the resistor? Yeah, this resistor. So we get the OVP input, so it passes through this resistor, goes to the charging LTO circuit of the power IC. So this point right here goes straight to the power IC. And we have 
the enable signal of this IC which is not available that's why I, I was saying that according to me there was not supposed to be a voltage in the VBAT when you connect the, the charger if this resistor is bad but seems like yeah I'm wrong because there is a voltage even though the resistor is bad so let's go ahead and replace this resistor I don't know the value of the resistor I will have to look for a similar circuit to remove that uh, the value is not being shown here so what are we doing here we have to replace this resistor I was looking for a motherboard I the same type of motherboard so that I can remove the same resistor from the same location that I can replace this resistor with and it will work well so now that we have the resistor off so let's go ahead I mean this resistor is very tiny so you have to reduce the airflow of your of your rework station if not it's going to blow the resistor off okay just like that and very smooth okay great let's call down the pcb then test and see if you will get that lvo voltage now after changing the resistor the next thing is to check the voltage in the v bud okay that's great it's in 4.1 volt in the v bud line that's a good sign that the resist resistor changes something so what is love is for us to test connect the battery then connect the charger again see if it's still going to show charging as it was showing and also if it's going to consume if it consume then we leave it for a few minutes to see if we will get any percentage let's connect it's still showing okay great we are getting current consumption from my arm meta right now so it's been about five minutes let's see if the phone is charging you can see that's two percent right and also if you take a look at our charging arm meta you will see the phone is charging that it's consuming between uh, 1.4 to 1.6 amp the charge so that's okay so which means that we solved the problem to take a look again we have three percentage right there well i'm saying is my care if you want my courses you can always get my courses either you are getting the basic level or the professional level course where you will learn how to troubleshoot from the basics schematic level block diagram level and also you can get my book the block diagram master so you can learn mobile repairing starting from the basics to the advanced level micro soldering level just from my online courses and they are very cheap to get them send me a message on whatsapp using the number on the screen or check the link in the pinned comment or the video description if you are watching this on youtube so thank you follow and see you soon